the Japanese lurkers, many divers use the corselet suit, which covers merely the upper part of the body. This equipment is light, allowing free movement on the seabed. The white diver is Peter Nakashiba, friend and advisor of the Japanese in Darwin, an interpreter in the recent court proceedings. Here on a Darwin lugger, a Japanese diver prepares for the descent. He uses the full suit, heavy but fully protective. In this garb, the diver can work for two hours at a depth of 60 feet. In the early days, aboriginals were employed to dive without apparatus. And many of them worked at depths of 50 feet, but not for long. The enormous pressure soon ends the life of a skin diver. Even dress divers have to be very careful. Weighted boots to keep a good man down. Down where the pearl shell grows. The principal product is pearl shell or mother of pearl. The giant oysters are gathered from the seabed by the diver who sends them aloft in a net to be opened aboard the lugger. The pearling grounds of Darwin, Queensland and Broome produce every year pearl shell worth a quarter of a million pounds. This valuable industry depends on the men who risk their lives for the treasure of the sea. For 1,200 miles along the coast of Queensland is a unique geographic phenomenon and one of the scenic wonders of the world. It is also a rich storehouse of pearls, crocus shell and base de mer. Now, however, the reef is acquiring a new significance as a superb fishing ground. Shark fins, a good sign for the sea wolves are seeking the same quarry as the anglers. A school of Spanish mackerel. It looks like some good sport, so bait the hooks, boys, and troll. There's a bite, and he's well hooked. A good solid fish, too, by the look of it. Yes, a beauty. So get out the gaff and haul the prize aboard. The Spanish mackerel is a fine fighter, tenacious like the other Spaniards, and there's any amount of them here. They spend their days in schools, but they know how to take their hook. Several tourist resorts have sprung up on the Barrier Reef, notably on Hayman and Lindeman Island. And anglers from all over Australia and abroad come here for the sport. Zane Gray plans to fish the reef waters on his next trip to Australia. Apart from Spanish mackerel, these waters are famed for tunny, red emperor, marlin, marco, and other great sport fish. The potential commercial value of the barrier reef fisheries makes them a great asset to Queensland, and for anglers, these coral seas are a paradise. There's a catch for you. The biggest one is a 60-pounder. That's fishing, not lying. Yippee! Ride them, cowboy. Well, folks, here we are at Warwick, Queensland for the Great Rodeo. Oh, get, will you? And let a fair dinkum bloke have a go. This is just a bit of a joke and ride, I said. Still, you don't want to go poking borax at them till you've had a go at it yourself. Some of these prads is proper blinking outlaws, fair dinkum. But these boys know how to stick to them, and none of your fancy cowboy saddles, neither. Go on, Blue. Hang on to them. Some city blokes had reckoned these whalers was real wild, but these fellas don't reckon they're wild enough, so they tickle them up a bit. Go on, Doc, tear into them. Cripes, this one's fresh enough anyhow. Look out. They gotta be careful the horse don't tread on their face, you know. Horses oops is terrible tender. Who's this? The man from Snowy River himself. And get the white moleskins. Well, they was white anyway. This nag reckons he'd rather play solo. Yes, it's a lay down misere. Sends an alpine splendor to the Australian scene at Kosciuszko, winter playground of the land of summer. of a good fall brings cheering enthusiasts from everywhere to the famous resort where fledgling snowbirds learn to know the snow and some of them take no time to get closely acquainted. 
from the Hotel Kosciuszko, a party sets out for the chalet, the snow sporters' headquarters high up on Charlotte Park. And there's the summit of Mount Kosciuszko. They come up slowly to go down fast. Experts from the snowfields of Europe and accomplished members of the Ski Club of Australia. It takes time to learn to ski well, but it's worth it. The most exhilarating sport on earth. No aeroplane ride could ever give the same exciting sense of bird-like flight. There's George Day, Australia's all-round ski champion. No longer earthbound, but spellbound by mountain magic. Winged with the wind as they whirl through a white world. a few minutes before three o'clock on Melbourne Cup Day. A crowd of 100,000 packs the huge course, wagering fortunes on the toad and with the books, trying to pick the winner of the most open race in all cup history. Derby winner Delta, heavily backed on the course, displaces Stamen as favourite. Victoria's new governess, Adalys Brooks, arrives with Lady Brooks and their daughter Jeanette to see their first Melbourne Cup. Top hats come out in greater numbers than pre-war. And my lady's not displayed by early afternoon showers. Her form's more important than the favourite to her. Despite scratchings of several runners and the tragic death after an accident of Count Serrano, there are still 31 runners left to contest the gruelling two miles for a prize of £12,000. Excitement increases as the field goes to the post. All Australia stops work as the horses line up. Several horses in the big field are fractious at the barrier. But after a little delay, they're off. First to move from the inside are Better Law, Finn McCool and Delta. Vagabond next and then Ben Bolo from Stamen followed by Sunfire. On the outside going fast is Blue Legend followed by Comic Court racing up towards the lead. A furlong from the start, Better Law is the leader from Delta, Dashing Bow, Ben Bolo, then Fox Army, Comic Court, Boyle, Bruin, Playboy, Blue Legend, Sun Lyric and Persist. After Dark is second last and Hurry Up last. Towards the winning post the first time, Bruin, the only father in the field, leads a length from Fox Army. A length to Comic Court third, Hoyle fourth, then Iron Duke and Ben Bolo. At the head of the others is Playboy. Still second last and last are after dark and hurry up. Along the back there's little change. Bruin still carting them along at a good pace, but Hoyle and Fox Army just in front of Comic Court. Ben Bolo is moving forward, but is still a fair way back. It's a strong outfield at the nine. Bruin still bowls along a length in front of Hoyle, a length to Fox Army, half a length to Comic Court, pulling hard, then Ben Volo going well on the inside. Soon after this, Ben Volo got a squeeze and dropped back through the field. Past the six and Bruin is still the pacemaker in front of Hoyle, a length further back to Fox Army in the box seat, followed on the outside by Comic Court, then Sun Lyric, Delta, Sunfire and Iron Duke. At the head of the others is Stamen, followed by Betelor. Ben Volo is moving forward again. Ben Volo gets a new lease of life and actually gains a length on the field. Free from home is the leader from Fox Army and Hoyle, both looking dangerous. And coming fast on the outside are Delta and Iron Duke. Ben Volo is still well back. Straightening up two from home and though Bruin still leads, he's under the whip. Hoyle and Fox Army issue a challenge. Saxony's coming fast and Spamin's putting in a claim. A furlong from home and Fox Army and Hoyle pass Bruin. The old boys had it. It's Hoyle and Fox Army locked together inside the furlong. Hoyle on the inside, Fox Army on the outside. Stride by stride, nothing between them. But Fox Army gradually forges ahead. And look at Ben Volo on the outside. Fox Army's clear. Ben Volo's brilliant run is too late. Fox Army wins from Hoyle. Ben Volo third, Bruin fourth, then Delta and Playboy. The fog is not in this race, Nelson. Now watch the finish in slow motion. Fox Army's courage and stamina win the Hoyle struggles gamely. Ben Bolo's great run is too late. Fox Army a 16 to 1 chance is the best horse of the day and gets a great ovation. So does Jockey Fellows who has his first ride in the Melbourne Cup and lands the winner. Army winner of the 
of the 1949 Melbourne Cup joins the champion stayers of the Australian turf. Trainer Danny Lewis is all smiles at his first winner in the big race and watches owner LG Robinson accept the trophy from Sir Dallas Brooks. Very proud of themselves, owner, trainer and jockey fellows, and jolly good fellows.